A Woman and Her Dead Husband by D. H. Lawrence. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Ah, stern cold man, how can you lie so restless hard while I wash you with weeping water? Ah, face carved hard and cold. You have been like this, on your guard against me, since death began. You masquerader, how can you shame to act this part of unswerving indifference to me? It is not you. Why disguise yourself against me, to break my heart? You evader, you've a warm mouth, a good warm mouth, always sooner to soften even than your sudden eyes. Ah, cruel, to keep your mouth restless, however often I kiss it in drought. You are not he. Who are you, lying in his pace on the bed, and rigid and indifferent to me? His mouth, though he laughed or sulked, was always warm and red and good to me and his eyes could see the white moon hang like a breast revealed by the slipping shawl of stars could see the small stars tremble as the heart beneath did wield systole diastole and he showed it me so when he made his love to me and his brows like rocks on the sea jut out and his eyes were deep like the sea with shadow and he looked at me till I sank in him like the sea. Awfully. Oh, he was multiform. Which then was he among the manifold? The gay, the sorrowful, the seer? I have loved a rich race of men in one, but not this, this never warm, metal cold. Ah, masquerader! with your steel face white enameled. Were you he, after all, and I never saw you or felt you in kissing? Yet sometimes my heart was trammeled with fear, evader. You will not stir, nor hear me, not a sound. Then it was you. And all this time you were like this when I lived with you? It is not true. I am frightened. I am frightened of you and of everything. Oh, God! God, too, has deceived me in everything, in everything. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. And So Did I by Isaac Joslyn Cox Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett Before the fire that winter's night None seems so sweet as she With winning smile and dark eyes bright And playful repartee The dancing light as round it flashed To her seemed drawing nigh Her slender waist pressed unabashed Thus guided, so did I It softly touched her cheeks aflame I scarce repressed a sigh. It touched her lips. Dared I the same? Too tempting. So did I. Her ruby lips, half pouting, seemed my boldness to decry. Pause step was heard. The flame scarce gleamed, went out. And so did I. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Circe by H. D. Hilda Doolittle. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. It was easy enough to bend them to my wish. It was easy enough to alter them with a touch. But you, adrift on the great sea, how shall I call you back? Cedar and white ash? Rock cedar and sand plants and tamarisk, red cedar and white cedar and black cedar from the inmost forest, fragrance upon fragrance, and all of my sea magic 
is for naught. It was easy enough. A thought called them from the sharp edges of the earth. They prayed for a touch. They cried for the sight of my face. They entreated me till in pity I turned each to his own self. Panther and panther, then a black leopard follows close. Black panther and red and a great hound. A godlike beast cut the sand in a clear ring and shut me from the earth and cover the sea sound with their throats and the sea roar with their own barks and bellowing and snarls and the sea stars and the swirl of the sand and the rock tamarisk and the wind resonance but not your voice it is easy enough to call men from the edges of the earth. It is easy enough to summon them to my feet with a thought. It is beautiful to see the tall panther and the sleek deerhounds circle in the dark. It is easy enough to make cedar and white ash fumes into palaces and to cover the sea caves with ivory and onyx. But I would give up rock fringes of coral and the inmost chamber of my island palace and my own gifts and the whole region of my power and magic for your glance. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Death of the Flowers by William Cullen Bryant Read for LibriVox.org by Arrowit The melancholy days have come, the saddest of the year, Of wailing winds and naked woods and meadows brown and sear. Heaped in the hollows of the grove, the autumn leaves lie dead. They rustle to the eddying gust and to the rabbit's tread. The robin and the wren are flown, and from the shrubs the jay, and from the wood-top calls the crow all through the gloomy day. Where are the flowers, the fair young flowers, that lately sprang and stood, in brighter light and softer airs, a beauteous sisterhood? Alas, they all are in their graves, the gentle race of flowers, are lying in their lowly beds with the fair and good of ours. The rain is falling where they lie, but the cold November rain calls not from out the gloomy earth, the lovely ones again. The windflower and the violet, they perished long ago, and the briar rose and orchis died amid the summer glow. But on the hill the goldenrod, and the aster in the wood, and the yellow sunflower by the brook in autumn beauty stood, till fell the frost from the clear cold heaven, as falls the plague on men, and the brightness of their smile was gone, from upland, glade, and glen. And now when comes the calm mild day, as still such days will come, to call the squirrel and the bee out from their winter home, when the sound of dropping nuts is heard, though all the trees are still, and twinkle in the smoky light the waters of the rill, the south wind searches for the flowers whose fragrance late he bore, and sighs to find them in the wood and by the stream no more. And then I think of one who in her youthful beauty died, the fair meek blossom that grew up and faded by my side. In the cold moist earth we laid her, when the forest cast the leaf, and we wept that one so lovely should have a life so brief. Yet not unmeet it was that one, like that young friend of ours, so gentle and so beautiful, should perish with the flowers. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Flower Gathering by Robert Frost Read for LibriVox.org by The Bookworm I left you in the morning, and in the morning glow You walked away beside me to make me sad to go. Do you know me in the gloaming, gaunt and dusty gray with roaming? Are you dumb because you know me not, or dumb because you know? 
all for me and not a question for the faded flowers gay that could take me from beside you for the ages of a day they are yours and be the measure of their worth for you to treasure the measure of the little while that i've been long away end of poem this recording is in the public domain Heat by Hilda Doolittle Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake O oh, wind, rent open the heat, cut apart the heat, rend it to tatters. Fruit cannot drop through this thick air fruit, cannot fall into heat that presses up and blunts the points of pears and rounds the grapes cut through the heat plow through it turning it on either side of your path end of poem this recording is in the public domain let us drink and be merry by thomas jordan Read for LibriVox.org by Arrowet. Let us drink and be merry, dance, joke, and rejoice, With claret and sherry, theorbo and voice. The changeable world to our joy is unjust, All treasures uncertain, then down with your dust. In frolics dispose your pounds, shillings, and pence, For we shall be nothing a hundred years hence. We'll sport and be free with Moll, Betty, and Dolly, Have oysters and lobsters to cure melancholy. Fish dinners will make a man spring like a flea, Dame Venus, love's lady, was born of the sea. With her and with Bacchus we'll tickle the sense, for we shall be past it a hundred years hence. Your most beautiful bride, who with garlands is crowned, and kills with each glance as she treads on the ground, whose lightness and brightness doth shine in such splendor, that one but the stars are thought fit to attend her. Though now she be pleasant and sweet to the sense, will be damnable moldy a hundred years hence. Then why should we turmoil in cares and in fears, Turn all our tranquillity to sighs and to tears. Let's eat, drink, and play till the worms do corrupt us. Tis certain, post-mortem, no love voluptus. For health, wealth, and beauty, wit, learning, and sense, Must all come to nothing a hundred years hence. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Mother Night by James Weldon Johnson for LibriVox.org, narrated by Sean McKinley. Eternities before the first-born day, or ere the first sun fledged his wings of flame, calm night, the everlasting and the same, a brooding mother over chaos lay, and whirling suns shall blaze and then decay, shall run their fiery courses and then claim the heaven and the darkness whence they came back to nirvanic peace shall grope their way. So when my feeble sun of life burns out, and sounded is the hour for my long sleep, I shall, full weary of the feverish light, welcome the darkness without fear or doubt, and heavy-lidded I shall softly creep into the quiet bosom of the night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Of that so sweet imprisonment by James Joyce for LibriVox.org, narrated by Sean McKinley. Of that so sweet imprisonment, my soul, dearest, is fain, soft arms that woo me to relent and woo me to detain. Ah, could they ever hold me there gladly were I a prisoner, dearest. Through interwoven arms, by love made tremulous, That night allures me, where alarms no wise may trouble us. But sleep to dreamier sleep, be wed, Where soul with soul lies prisoned. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Old Age by Carolyn Clive Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett. 
Thou hast been wronged, I think, old age. Thy sovereign reign comes not in wrath. Thou call'st us home from pilgrimage, spreadest the seat and clearest the hearth. The hopes and fears that shook our youth by thee are turned to a certainty. I see my boy become a man. I hold my girl's girl on my knee. Whate'er of good has been, dost thou in the departed past make sure. Whate'er has changed from weal to woe, thy comrade death stands nigh to cure. And once or twice in age there shines brief gladness, as when winter weaves in frosty days o'er naked trees, a sudden splendor of white leaves. The past revives, and thoughts return, which kindled once the youthful breast. They light us, though no more they burn, they turn to gray, and are at rest. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. An Old Story by Edwin Arlington Robinson Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica Strange that I did not know him then, that friend of mine. I did not even show him then one friendly sign, but cursed him for the ways he had to make me see my envy of the praise he had for praising me. I would have rid the earth of him once in my pride. I never knew the worth of him until he died. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sea Rose by H. D. Hilda Doolittle. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Rose, harsh rose, marred and with stilt of petals, meager flower, thin, sparse of leaf, more precious than a wet rose single on a stem. You are caught in the drift, stunted with small leaf. You are flung on the sand. You are lifted in the crisp sand that drives in the wind. Can the spice rose drip such acrid fragrance hardened in a leaf? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Silently She's Combing by James Joyce For LibriVox.org Narrated by Sean McKinley Silently she's combing, combing her long hair, Silently and graciously, with many a pretty air. The sun is in the willow leaves and on the dappled grass, And still she's combing her long hair before the looking-glass. I pray you, cease to comb out, comb out your long hair, For I have heard of witchery under a pretty air, That makes as one thing to the lover staying and going hence, all fair, with many a pretty air, and many a negligence. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sonnet 116 by William Shakespeare For LibriVox.org Narrated by Sean McKinley let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds, or bends with the remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever-fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark, whose worth's unknown, although his height be taken. Love's not time's fool, Though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come, love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be error, and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man ever loved. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Sword of Arthur by John Clare Minot Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica A 
A castle stands in Yorkshire, oh, the hill is fair and green, and far beneath it lies a cave no living man has seen. It is the cave enchanted, oh, seek it ere ye die, and there King Arthur and his knights in dreamless slumber lie. One time a peasant found it, oh, the years have hurried well, it was the day of fate for him, and this is what befell. Upon a couch of crystal, O oh heart, be pure and strong, he saw the king, and close beside, the armored knights a throng. And all of them were sleeping, praise God who sendeth rest, the sleep that comes when strife is done, and ended every quest. Beside the good King Arthur, how high is your desire, his sword within its scabbard lay, the sword with blade of fire. Now had the peasant known it, oh, if we all could know, he should have drawn that wondrous blade before he turned to go. If but his hand had touched it, the sword still lieth there, he would have felt in every vein a lofty purpose rare. If but his hand had drawn it, the sword still lieth there, a kingly way he would have walked wherever he might fare. But no, he fled affrighted, O oh, pitiful the cost, and then he knew but lo, the way into the cave was lost. He searched forever after, all this was long ago, but never more that crystal cave his eager eyes could know. Pray God ye have the vision, O oh, search in every land, to seize the sword that Arthur bore when it lies there at your hand. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. This Heart That Flutters Near My Heart by James Joyce For LibriVox.org Narrated by Sean McKinley This heart that flutters near my heart My hope and all my riches is Unhappy when we draw apart And happy between kiss and kiss My hope and all my riches Yes, and all my happiness For there, as in some mossy nest the wrens will diverse treasures keep. I laid those treasures I possessed, Ere that mine eyes had learned to weep. Shall we not be as wise as they, Though love live but a day? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Alfred Tennyson by Robert Stephen Hawker Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica they told me in their shadowy phrase, caught from a tale gone by, that Arthur, king of Cornish praise, died not, and would not die. Dreams had they, that in fairy bowers their living warrior lies, or wears a garland of the flowers that grow in paradise. I read the rune with deeper kin, and thus the myth I trace, a bard should rise mid future men, the mightiest of his race. He would great Arthur's deeds rehearse, on grey Dundagel's shore, and so the king in laurelled verse shall live and die no more. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To the Western Wind by Robert Herrick. Read for LibriVox.org by Karen Savage. Sweet Western Wind, whose luck it is made rival with the air to give Perena's lip a kiss and fan her wanton hair. Bring me but one, I'll promise thee, instead of common showers, Thy wings shall be embalmed by me, and all beset with flowers. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Violets by Robert Herrick Read for LibriVox.org by Karen Savage Welcome, maids of honour, you do bring in the spring and wait upon her. She has virgins many, fresh and fair, yet you are more sweet than any. You're the maiden posies, and so graced to be placed for damask roses. Yet though thus respected, by and by you do lie, poor girls, neglected. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Why have you sought? By H. D. Hilda Doolittle. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. 
Why have you sought the Greeks, Eros, when such delight was yours in the far depth of sky? There you could note bright ivory, take color where she bent her face, and watch fair gold shed gold on radiant surface of porch and pillar. And ivory and bright gold, polished and lustrous, grow faint beside that wondrous flesh and print of her foothold. Love, why do you tempt the Grecian porticos? Here men are bent with thought, and women waste fair moments gathering lint and pricking colored stuffs to mar their breasts, while she, adored, wastes not her fingers, worn of fire and sword, wastes not her touch on linen and fine thread, wastes not her head in thought and pondering. Love, why have you sought the horde of spearsmen? Why the tent Achilles pitched beside the river ford? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.